Do you want to make that cool bash script run automatically? This is the video for you. We're going to talk about cron jobs and we're going to talk about how you can use cron jobs to make something run every X number of minutes, hours, days of the week, days of the month, and month. So if you want to run something on the first day of January every year, you can do that. If you want something to run every 15 minutes, you can do that. Let's take a look at how to do this and jump right in. So each cron command begins with five different entries and then a command. These first five entries are what determine how often this runs. And here I just have wildcards. So the asterisk is a wildcard and that means this would run every minute. But the first one is the minute it's gonna run and the options you have are zero through 59. Next is the hour, which are zero through 23. Next is the day of the month, which is 1 to 31. Next is the month, which is 1 to 12. And last is the day of the week, which is 0 through 6. 0 is Sunday. So you can combine these entries to get something to run every Monday that is also the first of the month or the first of the month and every Monday. It just depends on how you set these up. Some You can get really complicated with these and that's a little bit beyond the scope of this video. But uh, let's take a look at what you can actually fill these with. So I talked about the wild card. That's uh, one you'll end up seeing a lot. But you can also use specific numbers. In the minute one here, we could put a one or a two and it would run that at whatever hour number one, oh one or oh two, depending on which one we entered. You can enter multiple numbers. And so one comma two comma three would use those. So if we entered that in the minute section, that would run it at whatever 01, whatever 02, and whatever 03. That would run at the first three minutes of every hour if everything else was kept wildcards. Ranges, one to three, four to six. Again, same thing, except you just don't have to add the extra numbers in between. So if you had one or a zero, if you had zero through 59, you would run it every minute of the hour. I don't know why you'd want to set it that way, but you could do that. You can also have multiple numbers and ranges together. So if I had one, two, and then four through six, that would be in the minute here, that would run at 01, 02, and then 04, 05, and 06. And then the most popular one I tend to see because people want to run this every hour or every 10 minutes or something like that is star slash and then a number. So in the minutes section here, star slash five would be for five minutes, star slash 15 every 15 minutes. If you put star slash six, for example, in the hour section here, that would be every hour. So something really important, once you go past this minute section here, you really want to pick something in the minute slot. Because for example, if I was to put a one here, that would start running the process at 1 a.m., right? But that would run that every minute at 1 a.m. So 1 a.m., 101 a.m., 102 a.m., all the way up through 1.59 a.m. So that's something to watch out for. And at that point, like I would wanna pick something like 10 or 15 or zero. If I wanna run it exactly at 1 a.m., I could do that. But you wanna be careful not to have too many things kick off at a certain minute. So that might be something where you wanna put this at random times in the hour. It is going to give it some sort of leeway to kind of play with when you do that, but it's just something to watch out for and something that ultimately you need to be careful of. You don't want a script you intend to run every six hours to all of a sudden try to run 60 times in a single hour. Now we'll take a look at some examples in the terminal. By default, when you first run this, you may be asked, which editor do you want to use with CronTab? I had escaped out of this choice because I wanted to try to do that here in the video and it looks like it ended up taking Nano as my default. So let's go ahead and set that first because I do prefer Vim. So I believe to actually reselect the editor, we just type select editor and it's gonna ask me which one I want. Let's go for Vim basic. And so now when I type crontab e, there we go, now I'm in Vim. So it is important to note that select editor seems to be an Ubuntu thing. If you don't have Ubuntu based, this is Pop! OS specifically, 
But if you're in Fedora or Arch or something else, a lot of times this is actually set in your dot profile or dot bash underscore profile or dot bash RC file. And I do have information on the post on how to actually update those. By default, some distros don't even have CronTab installed. In Arch Linux, you actually need to install Crony, C-R-O-N-I-E, to get that to work. And with that as well, I'll have that all in the article. Let's take a look at a few commands and see if we can kind of nail this down. So I have various commands here. I will have some better references here to each of the meanings of some of these, but let's go through these. So the first one here is gonna be every five minutes between midnight and noon. And let's take a look at what that is. Again, we have minute, hour, day of the month, month, day of the week. So minute is star slash five. Star is a wild card in this case, and slash five means every five minutes. If it was star slash five in the next blank, it would be every five hours. And I'll, sh I'll add one more down below and we can look at that. Zero to 12 is midnight to noon. The star, star, star here, it just means run it every five minutes between midnight and noon, regardless of the day, the month, or the day of the week. Next, we have 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m., through 6 p.m. at the top of the hour. So you'll notice we have a zero here in the minutes place and then at 9, 11, 13, which is 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m., as well as 14 through 18, which is 2 p.m. through 6 p.m. And again, it doesn't care what day of the week, day of the month, or month it is. This next one, we just have it happening at 6 a.m. on the first of the month. And that's just 0, 6, 1, and then star, star. So again, it doesn't matter what month, it doesn't matter what day of the week, but it only runs on the first day of the month. And then 6 a.m. every Monday, 0, 6, 0, 0, 1. Whoops. It's actually 0, 6, 0, 6, star, star, 1. There we go. So this means this is gonna run at 6 a.m. every Monday. And last one here is gonna run at midnight, 12.00 on January 1st. It doesn't matter what day of the week. As you can see here, you can make these pretty customized. Let's say that we wanna run something every six hours, but we only wanna run that during the week, the normal weekday, like a work day. So this would run every six hours, but it would only run Monday through Friday. Now, you may be saying, well, what if I want to run something else? Like, what if I want to run a more complicated script here? You can do that. There are a couple of ways to do that. You so the first option to run a longer command would be to type it here. You could do this, but I would not recommend that. Instead, if you're looking to run a more complex command, I would recommend to put that in its own file. Maybe you have that located at home slash bash slash script.sh or however you want to name it. But this would go and actually pick this file up and then run that file. So you could set other things in that file like a bash environment or something like that. But that would be my recommendation on how to do this. There may even be a way you can include a call to like Python script, but I don't know, maybe there's a video out there about that. The other thing that I would say here is there are also some things you can add. So at the very beginning here, we could say something like shell equals bin bash. You can also do something like mail to you and you can actually have it email you if a script fails. So that could be an option for you as well. It just depends on how important these are. I like to use bin bash here at the top because if you don't do this, by default, it's gonna run these commands as shell commands. And so just to eliminate any kind of differences between the two, I would recommend adding bin bash or fish or whatever you prefer to use as your primary shell up here. Because there are many things that you could do with this. You could set up something like your trim command to run if you needed that to run for an SSD or something like that. Maybe for something like Pop! OS, maybe you'd just want it to go out and make a quick check for updates every morning. That way, 
once you actually got on the computer, you could check to see, okay, hey, I have, you know, 12 updates ready and I can go on and install this without having to go run sudo apt update by itself or add it with and and, whatever you usually do. Naturally, there are many other things you can do with this, especially when it comes to the world of servers. I would also point out that, keep in mind, you can kick off other coding languages from here, like Python. And if you're looking at more information on how to do that, I would take a look at this video right over here. And thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.